Kia ora whanau and welcome to another episode of Get a Job and Get Healthy with Costas Enterprises. I am your host, Alex Costas, and um, I just want to say a huge thank you for everyone for listening um, and really appreciate the uh, listens that I got over the last week from the new <laughs> podcast episode. Um, what I thought I would talk to you guys about uh, today, uh, I've been as you guys know, listening to a lot of audiobooks, and one of the ones that I'm actually listening to now is uh, Rachel Hollis, uh, who is famous for doing the Girl Wash Your Face, um, the, um, you know, the, those, those sorts of motivational uh, books, which are primarily, you know, centered around women, obviously. Um, however, still stuff that men can glean from there as well. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to do this podcast, uh, I actually felt really strongly about this. Um, there was a, in the book she quotes that there is a study of people who, for whatever reason, um, are not sure about actually applying for jobs on their own merit. So what I mean by that is, in the study there was, you know, if, if a, it was saying that if a male feels like he is going to apply for a job Um, if he can do 60% of the role then you know he will apply for the job Uh, while as uh, it was saying that in the study that a woman if she felt she could only apply for the job when she's got like a hundred percent of the skills required and that sort of resonated with me quite a bit because I was like hang on I don't think that's that's right and uh, like Rachel was talking about in the book uh, she basically talks about how, you know, why shouldn't you go for that job? And, and I, I agree completely. Um, so I thought what I would sort of raise in this podcast episode is exactly that. Um, I, I want you to sort of be a bit more confident about yourself. And also, uh, basically, let's go over some of the things that, you know, when you should apply for that job, or rather than asking if you should apply Um, which is, of course, the title of the podcast episode, if you should apply. So when should you apply? Now, like the the study is right, you know, most times, if you feel you've got sort of 60% of the role, then yes, you should apply. And what I mean by that is when you're looking at the job description, if you see that there's certain skills... um, and no, we're not going to do the Liam Neeson, the I have a, I have a group of skills. We're not going to do that. Um, what I want you to do is think about when you're looking at that job description, we've talked before about identifying the skills that they're looking for. So if you can do, you know, four out of the six skills that they list, if they list six, six skills, then you should definitely be applying. Um, and the other time that, that, that people sort of shy away from applying for that job, it could they could have five out of the six skills, but there might be something like experience. It, it says that they need three years experience. Maybe they've only got one year or two years experience, and they think, oh, no, it's a prerequisite that there's three years experience. I'm going to tell you right now, it's pretty much bullshit. Um, if you're a company and you need five years experience of doing something and you're trying to be you know brand new in this field, then you have to be open to the idea of hiring someone that's young, someone that's new, someone that has just graduated, for example. And this goes out to my grads. Um, I know you guys are probably not listening. Um, and when I say my grads, I mean the the, the, the people that I help uh, coach with these sorts of things. If you are listening, um, apply for that job. doesn't matter whether or not you've got 100% of the skills. You're a graduate. You've, you've just come out of the field of what these people are looking for and that's kind of what I'm talking about with this whole thing is if you feel like you've got over half of the skills then apply worst they can say is no and if they say no then you can ask for feedback why you didn't get it and if they turn around and say oh look you know because uh, it said you needed five years experience you've only got two years experience then realistically, if you want to go for a company that's not prepared to sort of, you know, accept your your youth uh, with that experience uh, uh, for what it is, like, you may not have five years experience in a particular field, but if you've even got one to two years of a particular field, it means that that company, if they are open-minded, 
can actually mold you the way that they want you to be, which is very, very important. So if you're going to be something like a project leader or a project manager, that's a little bit different, of course, because, you know, in that respect, you probably do need some experience showing that you can do this, this, and this, uh, so that you can meet the project's deadlines and guidelines. However, you don't need that to be professional experience. So another thing that I sort of have told you guys before uh, when it comes to applying for jobs, you don't have to just draw on experiences that you've worked in, uh, have been employed in. You can use any experience that uses those skills from the rest of your life. So for example, you may not have project management skills uh, per se in the, in the business, but you may have, you know, managed a successful uh, sports club for the last five years, uh, including all things like, you know, financing and uh, treasury, uh, general organizational skills, all those things will all still come into play. And while you may not have the professional experience, you still have transfer transferable skills in that respect. And that's what we're talking about here, is how can you make your your life experiences that you've done um, work for you so that you do actually know that, you know, you can do the skills needed for that particular job. So I want you to do this. I want you to take take stock. Last, last couple of weeks, I sort of told you guys to take stock of what it was that you were doing, write down your goals, all those sorts of things. We've talked about that before. What we're going to do now is I want you to take your take stock of what it is that your skills are. We've talked about your skills previously, and I've got you to identify your skills. But this time, what I want you to do is to think about your experiences that you've used those skills and try to see if you can come up with any other skills. You know, um, most times when you're relating to a particular skill, there's actually about four or five other different skills which can be looked at or can be utilized through that same skill process which you can of course add to your skills list when you start identifying those sorts of skills that you have like for example if you've got judgment decision making skills well then that means that you know you've also got the ability to uh, look at a problem have you got problem solving skills have you got you know communication skills um, have you got what other things can come from judgment decision making um, uh, the, the ability to actually be assertive with your thing. Um, it's about basically making yourself confident enough that you can um, confident in your abilities that you can actually apply for that job. So do take your, your, your time doing this. Like take a good 5-10 minutes on each skill. Like try to think about what other skills could be looked at there and just write. Like even if you're wrong or you're right, you can go back and reread them and go, oh, wow, that's really not, not, not associated with that skill. But because you wrote it down, does that mean that you feel like you have that skill? Is that another skill that you can develop? All those sorts of things should be just firing neurons in your head so that you can actually achieve your goal. And your goal is to get a better job. Your goal is to be more confident about yourself so that you can apply for anything. You know, it's not about taking those roles and going, oh, well, you know, I can do this role. Um, I, I could probably do the senior role, but, you know, um, I, I know I'm only a junior. Well, you know what? Apply for the senior role. Worst comes to worst, they turn around and go, hey, look, we're not looking at a senior at the moment for you. Um, you'd be better off doing this type of role. Or they're just not interested. In which case, on to the next one. Like the Jay-Z song, on to the next one. Find another job. And... On that exact thing that we just talked about with senior roles, if you see a perfect job, but they're looking for a senior role, not a junior position, and you are fresh to the industry, fresh to the thing, you know what? Apply anyway. Doesn't matter whether you get it or not. I'll tell you right now, you're probably not going to get the job. You may not even get an interview. But the fact that you apply for a senior role and you've got some transferable skills where you believe that you can do that job does mean that you might get called up again six months down the line when they're looking for a junior position and they go actually this person would be really good for our team so don't uh, be shot down by the fact that you think you might not 
apply for the job because it's a senior role or you know you you only meet rather than the full seven skills or requirements that they ask you to meet you meet like five you know what apply because you never know you might get to that next stage and if you get to that next stage then you can show them in the interview which we've talked about why you deserve this role why you have the skills that are able to be uh, transferred and used remember that as a new employee especially in a new uh, in a new role in a new business that uh, employee uh, status that you have means that you can be taught means that you can learn their ways and um, if you're flexible and adaptable and able to actually take on their ways then you can be a huge asset to that uh, business so yeah I, I do want to sort of stress that yeah while the study sounds a bit you know it sounds a bit sexist in ways um, saying that me can only apply because they're 60% sure it's a confidence thing so man woman you know whatever you identify as I want you to effectively go and look at what it is that you're doing and acknowledge that you know you may only have five out of the seven requirements or four out of the six or you know if it's one out of the three guess what you, you know you, you, you're punching above your weight but you know good on you for trying um, however if you believe you can do most of the job then you're not you know you're not faking it till you make it what you're doing is you're showing the initiative that you may not have all seven attributes needed you got four you can learn three you know a skill is not something you're bored with a skill is something you you maintain something you create it's something that you evolve so take your skills learn from your skills and learn to you know not be afraid to say you know what I will put in for that senior position I will put in for that uh, you know that that project role that I wasn't sure of why not the only thing that's hurting you is yourself so don't let your self-confidence defeat you take that time learn what it is that you need to do and apply and then when you apply apply yourself as well so you guys will all know that you know by applying you're applying for a job well double entendre time well not double entendre sorry um but, you know, it's time to use this application for you to apply yourself with your skills. Like, show them that you can do the job. You may have four out of six. Show them that you have the skills to obtain that remaining two. I have every confidence in anybody that sort of follows me and listens to me and goes, you know what, I think I could. So if you think you can apply for that job, go for it don't knock it don't let anybody sway you don't let your mind sway you if you know that this is the perfect type of job that you want to get into then by all means apply why leave it to charge the worst they can say is no and if they say no you can ask for feedback you can ask for why you didn't get the job and if they turn around and give you some you know answer take that consideration don't take it personally but take that consideration and go right what did they say about me that that needs to be improved what can I improve so I can ensure I get this job next time I believe that you can do anything that you put your mind to when it comes to this sort of thing as long as you've got the confidence and the strength to believe that your skills will help you get the job that you need and one of those skills has to be identifying your skills one of those other skills has to be knowing that you know it's okay to apply it's okay to to have rejection and it's okay to you know have fear as well we're all we're all scared when we go for a job interview if you're not scared or nervous when you go for a job interview or a job application then you're, you're working at a, you're applying for a job that you don't need you know, if you've got 100% confidence, like, I can do this, I'm, I'm amazing, 
then what are you setting yourself up for? Like, is this a job you're going to be really, really bored at? Is this a job that you're going to be, you know, like, is this a perfect job? If it is, then why are you so calm? And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be calm, but there's being calm, there's being confident, there's being cautious. So apply for any job, but make sure that you can do at least 60% of that job. I think it's a pretty good place to, to end it. You guys know where to find me. Um, I've just opened up my LinkedIn site to show my uh, services that I offer, which is exactly like identifying skills, all that sort of stuff uh, that we've talked about previously. And so um, you can find that on my LinkedIn page, Alex Costas. You can also find my website info, uh, costasenterprises.business.blog. Um, you guys know that I've got a YouTube channel. Feel free to go over there and follow the link uh, in the description. Uh, that is my ambient sound one. I will hopefully be launching my YouTube personal YouTube channel shortly, which will cover a lot more of these podcast episodes. Um, and uh, you can find my Instagram on at the Kiwi Don, same as uh, my Twitter. Uh, and finally, you can always email me, uh, doncostas at gmail.com. That's D-O-N for Nike, C-O-S-T-A-S at gmail.com. Until next week, people, um, as always, I love you, and I hope that everyone is doing well, uh, and as always, good luck. Have a great week, people.